at 5. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, August 4th. I'm Max Tomlinson. And I'm Taryn Mitchell. Thank you so much for joining us on Wake Up and our radio simulcast on Power Talk 101.1 FM. Well, as always, before we get to our top story, let's bring in Weather Authority Meteorologist Zach McIntyre. He has a look at the forecast. Happy Hump Day, everyone. Happy hey, happy Hump, hump day. day. How are we doing, guys? Doing good. Good. I'm awake. Happy to be with you guys, of course. All happy right. To be here <laughs> and uh, happy to feel the temperatures aren't too freezing out there this morning. Yeah, you know, it's a nice uh, August morning out there. We do have a little bit of drizzle pushing down. Here's what it looks like widespread low clouds if you're traveling along the coast and to areas like Salinas, like Linden Gilroy and Hollister as well. We got some drizzle shuffling around out there, and that'll be the case over probably the next hour or two as you're traveling for that morning commute. Visibility pretty decent out there. Some reduced visibility as you head into Hollister and Salinas, but not tracking really any fog as of yet. So that's some good news as you're heading out the door. And temperatures mostly in the mid to upper 50s around the Bay Inland spots. Pretty similar, a few lower 50s south of King City. And then as we push throughout the day, temperatures pushing into the mid 60s. And we'll see a slightly warm day for those inland spots on the coast, though. Stay nice and cloudy. I'll tell you more about those temperatures coming up. Thanks, Zach. 501 to our top story this morning as the Delta variant is driving an increase in COVID-19 cases. It's a race against the clock to get people inoculated. Montage Health is joining other medical groups in requiring all of its employees to be fully vaccinated. KION Stephanie Aceves was in Marina and has those details. Good morning. In order to keep working at Montage Health, all employees are required to be vaccinated by October 1st. However, there are some that can be exempt through religious and medical exceptions. We know that the absolutely best and most efficient way for us to uh, combat this uh, pandemic is, is through vaccination. The Delta variant is causing concern in the medical community as more and more cases of COVID-19 are being reported throughout the country. The CEO of Montage Health says they're seeing an uptick in COVID patients, numbers they haven't seen since the surge in January. There have been over 60 uh, professional organizations, the American Medical Association, American Nursing Association, American Hospital Association, American College of Surgeons, all of whom have recommended that healthcare organizations mandate um, that their workforce be uh, vaccinated. Still one nurse who wanted to remain anonymous for fears of losing their job wrote into KION news tips expressing their frustration with the recent decision, saying it's important for everybody to have the right to make their own medical decisions, especially when it comes to something authorized for emergency use. According to the CEO of Montage Health, 87% of their 2,975 person staff is vaccinated, leaving around 385 people that are still unvaccinated. If after October 1st, if, if, if we have staff who uh, have not been vaccinated, we won't be able to continue. Uh, they'll they'll uh, be initially uh, suspended and, and, and ultimately we, uh, their employment with us will not be able to continue. Some hospitals like Salinas Valley Memorial is requiring new hires to be vaccinated, while Dominican currently has no mandate. Reporting for Wake Up, Stephanie Aceves, KION News Channel 546. Well, 503 now, health officials in San Francisco are allowing some people to get a supplemental shot. It's a strategy where different vaccines are mixed, possibly boosting effectiveness. Well, they're also not recommending booster shots. The move could be a first nationwide. It only goes for people who receive the single dose Johnson & Johnson shot. We are accommodating special requests from individuals who have received the Johnson & Johnson viral vector COVID-19 vaccine, and in many cases have consulted with their doctor who wish to receive a supplemental dose with an mRNA vaccine, such as Pfizer or Moderna. The CDC is not calling for booster shots or supplements right now. Dr. Anthony Fauci says those who are immunosuppressed may need them soon. Well, we could have a fully FDA approved COVID-19 vaccine by the end of this summer. The FDA is moving fast to approve Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, and it could happen as soon as Labor Day. Now, if this does happen, it might accelerate the approval process for vaccines for kids under the age of 12. Nearly 72,000 younger kids were diagnosed with COVID-19 between July 22nd and the 29th. That is an increase from 39,000 cases just the week before.
Well, happening today, the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District and other districts are beginning in-person instruction. The district expects to see more than 95% of students returning. With kindergarten, it's so important to be like in person you know, with the younger kids. It's very helpful for them to have that you know, personal connection. And I really can't wait to see them in the hallways, like say hello and just really welcome them back to school. MPOSD has a new digital academy for families who are not completely ready to have their kids back in person just yet. 120 students have opted for online. All right, everyone, let's check the weather on the five. Good morning, Zach. It was a little chilly this morning yeah. when I walked out the door. A little yeah. bit cool, a little bit of drizzle. Mm -hmm. uh, more the same for that hump day, but uh, you know, it's hump day, getting close to that weekend, so <laughs> it's exciting. We love there. a good yeah. hump day. The afternoons have been beautiful, too. So pretty. Especially yeah. when we get off work. Lots of sun. It's been beautiful in the afternoons today. We'll see temperatures cool down just a little bit, so not quite as much heat, but still nice out there. Here's what it looks like over the next couple hours. Seeing a lot of clouds today for sure around the coast. A couple of peaks of sunshine around 12 o'clock or so, but uh, starting off in the 50s, we'll be in the mid 60s by this afternoon. Topping off right around 67 degrees for most of the coast. Inland spot staying right around 84 degrees or so. Slightly warm for those inland spots on the coast. Partly cloudy and mild temperatures. We'll see upper 60s today and then we'll see temperatures warming up over the next couple days. So by Friday, it'll be nice and sunny on the coast with temperatures in the low 70s. And then for the weekend, staying on the slightly warm side. So today, a little cool. We'll see a little extra sunshine over the next couple days though and that'll help warm us up. I'll have more on what you could expect this afternoon coming up in a few. Thank you, Zach. 506 in court this morning. It's day three of a preliminary hearing for the father and son charged with the 1996 disappearance of Kristen Smart. In yesterday's hearing, veteran and retired Berkeley police officer Stephen Fleming was called to the stand. He says as a student, he lived on the same dorm that Smart lived in as a freshman. Fleming says he saw Paul Flores at the dorm twice in the spring of 1996. He says one time he saw Paul in Kristen's room and he thinks Kristen looked pretty uncomfortable, standoffish and nervous. Flores is accused of killing Smart and was the last person to be seen with her. His 80 year old father, Ruben Flores, is accused of helping him hide the body, which was never found. 507 now into a developing story. We are learning more about the movie theater shooting in Corona that left two teens dead last week. The 20 year old man charged with killing two people was reportedly with three friends at the time. They told investigators they were alarmed because they thought the suspect had a gun inside the theater. They say he was acting so strange they actually snuck out but did not warn anyone. Two of the friends later saw the defendant run out of the building and speed off in his car. Moments later, a theater employee found the victims with gunshot wounds in their heads. The two victims are identified as 18-year-old Riley Goodrich and 19-year-old TikToker Anthony Barajas. Well, in news around the state, the gears are turning at your local elections office. Ballots are being printed as polls show the state roughly divided on the recall election against Governor Gavin Newsom. New poll numbers from Emerson College ask the question to 1,000 registered voters. Of those responses, 46% were all for recalling Newsom. Along on the other side, 48% were against the recall. I will vote for not recall. I believe it's unfair. It has no basis. You want to see him stay? Yes, sir. I, th I think it needs to happen. You are pro recall. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's like get rid of him. Right now, Governor Newsom needs the Democrats who elected him to show up in enough numbers to help save his job. Officials say forecasting the turnout in this recall could be difficult. Four Republicans are heading into their first debate today. It's as the campaign for the September recall election and as they try to oust Governor Newsom from office. The candidates have a choice to make. They either pile up on Newsom or try to undercut each other in front of a statewide audience. Caitlyn Jenner and conservative talk radio host Larry Elder are not participating. Former U.S. Representative Doug Ossie says he'll argue his experience sets him apart from rivals John Cox, Kevin Kiley, and Kevin Faulkner. It will be held at Richard Nixon Presidential Library in Orange County. 
Well, also in California, Spirit Airlines experienced a third consecutive day of widespread flight disruptions. As of midday Tuesday, Spirit canceled more than 40% of its scheduled 40% of its schedule, that's about 300 flights. The airline says a majority of their flights will proceed as scheduled. They say they have been working around the clock to get back on track. They want to accept the tickets, so we have to go to from this line to the blue to the j blue jet line, and but it wouldn't work. And yesterday's disruptions come after cancellations and delays impacting 71% of Spirit's schedule on Monday plus 60% of its schedule on Sunday. Well, everyone still to come this morning, a report finds New York Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women. The new pressure on him to resign. Plus, a new eviction 